Our CES 2020 coverage is made possible thanks to EK, MSI, Thermaltake, Patriot, Lian Li, XPG, ViewSonic Elite, ECS Elite Group, and Creative. Hey everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. Now, this is a little bit more of our CES 2020 coverage, purely because we didn't want to publish it all in January for the main reason that it just wouldn't get seen. Now, while we were at CES, we actually stopped by EK. And if you know anything about whenever EK are at CES or Computex, well, you'll know that they don't exactly do things by halves. They had a lot to show. Starting with their AIOs. Now, this is actually the first venture for EK sort of going into the market of all-in-one uh, liquid coolers. Instead of having your custom loop or open loop, they've actually decided to go for a closed loop solution, really to compete with some of the big players out there like NZXT, uh, Corsair, and EVGA. Now, they were actually very, very clear that they did say that they do want to compete with Corsair on this, and they believe that the performance as well as the pricing is going to be pretty much what you'd expect to see uh, for something that's really going to rival that side of the market. Now, they have taken things a little bit differently. Instead of having your conventional AIO with addressable RGB fans, yes, this does have addressable RGB fans and it does come in 120mm, 240mm and 360mm variants, but the actual block itself had addressable RGB, but not like you've seen before. It was actually a really low profile, understated block that had a lot of addressable RGB on it. Now, in terms of the block uh, or the pump or however you want to word it, the bit that actually goes on top of your CPU, they are saying that it's not an Acer Tech design, but like I mentioned, apparently the performance is exactly where you'd expect it to be to compete with the big players like Corsair. Now, availability should be very, very soon because as we know in any product in the market, it's always the packaging that's actually the last piece of the puzzle to be made. And uh, as you saw from the B-roll footage, they've actually got the packaging already printed. So this should be coming out very, very soon. No concrete word on pricing, but as I say, very competitive. Now, moving on from that, uh, Inwin have uh, actually teamed up with EK on a few projects in the past. And what we've actually got here is the Inwin 909 EK. Now, to start with, this was actually a mod that was done by Joe Roby from EK, but it's actually now been taken one step further and is going to go into production. So apparently it is going to be a limited run, maybe around 100, and they do actually, uh, they're pretty confident that all 100 will be sold, even at the hefty price point of about £1,500, maybe even $1,500, depending on the region that you're from. Now, this does take things a little bit sort of further in terms of compared to your conventional chassis, because the motherboard tray is actually a distribution plate or a distribution block, whatever you want to call it. And it does look absolutely amazing. So really excited to sort of see this out on the market and see maybe what people are able to do with it. And it just goes to show that sometimes, uh, you know, a, quite a prolific mod, something that really wasn't intended to be anything more than that, can actually go into production and can uh, become a full fledged product. Now talking about sort of continuing on that trend of Inwin and EK teaming up, there is also the Inwin 303 EK. I know the naming structure is not exactly original, but it seems to work. The EK edition, if you want to call it that. They actually had this kind of built up and what essentially it is, is having a distribution plate built into the front of the chassis. In my opinion, this is actually going to make it really easy for novice users, people who want to dip their toes into the custom loop realm, because all it really involves is some straight bending, uh, some cuts, and away you go. So maybe this is kind of where the future of chassis is going to be heading, having the distribution plate built in so that you don't need a reservoir. Now, talking about reservoirs, this was probably the product that really excited me the most. They actually had a whole new range under their quantum kinetic range. So uh, what we've got is a cylindrical version, which will come in uh, essentially three different sizes, your small, medium and large, as well as the FLT range, which is your flat range, which will come in 120, 240 and 360. Now, the coolest actual thing about this is what was inside the reservoirs. Now, it's actually all down to the fluid. It kind of looked a little bit milky, semi-translucent, semi-opaque, depending on how you want to word it. But what it means is that the addressable RGB from the reservoir can actually shine through, but you can't physically see all the way through the fluid. And this was really, really cool. Now, the pumps themselves uh, that come included are a D5 with the cylindrical version, and then with the flat version, you can go for a D5 or a DDC. Or if you want, and you already maybe have a D5 or a DDC pump yourself, you can actually buy these pumpless, which are obviously gonna be a lot, lot cheaper. Now to show off exactly how this would look in a fully fledged system, they did have the Beast that is known as the Corsair Obsidian 1000D. 
And inside this case, they did have a stupidly thick distribution plate, and they've actually tweaked a few of the designs on the hinges of the 1000D, so you can actually pull everything out together, the front tray as well as the top tray where you'd have your radiators and fans. Now, I'm not sure why you'd want to do this, because essentially once you've built it up, away you go, you never have to do it again, and obviously you would have to use soft tubing, because you're just not going to be able to pull it out with a hard line, whether it be... Um, sort of glass or uh, acrylic. So it's a bit of an interesting one, the fact that they've taken a already niche product and kind of made it more niche. But um, I don't know, maybe you guys can let me know in the comments section below. Do you think this is really sort of needed? Uh, you know, what, what do you think about that? Moving on from that, the only other thing that they really sort of wanted to show was the fact that they are making more and more distribution plates for more chassis out there than ever. And the funny thing is, uh, one of the ones that they were showing off was for the Fantex Evolve X. The funny thing about that is the fact that Fantex actually make custom loop parts themselves. So quite interesting that they're going to be taking that and uh, hopefully, uh, I guess in EK's eyes, taking away some of that market share from them. So they actually made up a distribution block just to sort of show you how a system can look with one in there inside the Evolve X from Fantex. So yeah, maybe they're going to be making more and more distribution blocks and maybe this is the way that kind of EK are taking their, their products um, sort of, you know, to market whether it be including it in chassis or just having the distribution plates on their own. Yeah, let me know what you guys think about uh, kind of some of these moves that EK are making, trying to, I guess, delve into other areas of the market. It'd be really interesting to see what you guys have to say about it. Until next time, you know exactly what to do, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.